All right guys, today I'm gonna to be performing an experiment I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Here we got the BG GDI air induction system cleaner and we're gonna be using it on this 100,000 mile Buick Enclave. Now I just had the intake manifold off a couple days ago swapping some coils out and I noticed there was a decent amount of carbon buildup starting to form on the back of the intake valves. So I thought this would be a perfect time to pull the intake back off We'll take some pictures, some video, see what the valves look like before using the cleaner and then pull it back apart after the cleaner has been used and see just how much carbon was removed. Now BG recommends this, I believe they want this service performed every 30,000 miles. It's more of a preventative maintenance service, but it's also supposed to be able to remove the carbon as well. So I'm curious just how much carbon can be removed. And I was really surprised I didn't see any other YouTube videos uh, where people were going before and after. Maybe I didn't search hard enough, but uh, we're going we're gonna to find out today. Uh, now, if you don't know, GDI stands for gasoline direct injection. These engines spray fuel directly on top of the piston unlike the old port injection where the injectors were behind the intake valves. There's no more fuel being sprayed on the intake valves. Without that fuel, there's nothing to keep the intake valves clean. Um, so any oil vapor that is sucked up through the PCV valve will start being deposited on the back of the intake valves and the intake runners, the intake manifold, and all that collected oil will eventually turn into carbon and sludge. Now one easy way to help prevent carbon buildup in the intake is to only use the oil recommended by the manufacturer for your GDI engine. In this case it would be the Dexos 1. This oil is specially formulated for GDI applications and will help prevent, it's not going to fix the issue, but it will help prevent some of the carbon buildup on the intake valves. Alright, so I just wanted to show you quickly the product and the tools we're going to be using on this car today. So BG sells at least a couple different GDI cleaners. We're going to be using the part number 261. You can see here it's for GDI engines and it's supposed to clean the air intake, the valves, and the combustion chamber all at once. And it also comes with a can of uh, 44K, which most people are probably familiar with. This just goes in the gas tank uh, and that's not going to clean anything in the intake because obviously the fuel injector spray directly into the, uh, into the cylinder. But uh, this is the stuff that's going to be uh, cleaning the intake valves and the intake manifold. And we're going to be using this. It's the vehicle injection apparatus. So we have pressurized shop air coming through here and it wants you to set it at 40 PSI. This little nozzle here uh, sprays out a very fine mist of the cleaner into the intake. Now uh, you can, we usually put it right here before the throttle body. That way you're cleaning the, the throttle blade as well. Um, but you can, if you wanted to, you could hook it up to the intake uh, to a vacuum source, like uh, where the brake booster hose connects, you could do that as well. Um, this tool here, you don't have to have it, um, but, uh, and this is actually gonna be the first time I've used this tool. So they want you to periodically rev the engine to prevent any pooling of the liquid cleaner in the intake manifold, because the last thing you want is a whole bunch of this liquid cleaner sitting in the bottom of, the, of your intake, and you go to get on the throttle, and it sucks it all in at once and hydrolocks your motor. Um, so, Used to, I'd just rev up the engine every couple minutes. I come out here and uh, have to get in the car, blip the throttle. Uh, but that takes, uh, you know, you got to constantly watch the car while you're doing the uh, cleaning procedure. So this fully automates the uh, the whole thing. It plugs into the OBD2 to get your 12 volts. You got shop air coming in here and a little touch screen. And so pretty fancy. I'm, I'm excited to get to use it. So this hooks up to the steering wheel. And of course, this is just attaches to your gas pedal. But this is supposed to uh, blip the throttle like once every I think 15 to 30 seconds or so so uh, definitely help prevent pulling in the intake and the other thing you don't want is if you are not revving the throttle I've heard other shops have had problems with this when technicians will do this service and they will walk away uh, for a long time and won't be blipping the throttle is you can have this cleaner start uh, running into the catalytic converter in the exhaust and start pulling in the catalytic converter and uh, start burning in the catalytic converter and cause catalytic converter damage so uh, obviously not something you want as well so make sure you're uh, blipping the throttle consistently to prevent uh, any of those problems all right now hold on while i get this intake off we'll see what those valves look like all right the intake's off let's check these valves out so there's the rear cylinders, you can see. Pretty good amount of carbon. Keep 
in mind, this is a 100,000 mile, well-maintained car. The intake itself is pretty good. It's got uh, a film of oil on the inside, but uh, There you go, you can see a little bit of, a little bit of oil and grime on the inside. All right, now that the intake's back on there, I'm gonna go dry this thing, get it nice and hot. For the best results when using this intake cleaner, you should always do it at full operating temperature. All right, I'm back from a test drive. I got the injection apparatus hanging from the hood pointed right at the throttle body and I'm not spraying anything yet. I just got the air take off, got the mass airflow disconnected so it'll run. Now we're just going to, well we've already actually hooked it up, but I got this little rev tool hooked up and it wants you to have a target RPM of 3500 when it's revving so you can adjust uh, how, how much it presses the pedal down. You can, you can turn it down or you can turn it up, but uh, it's revving up right where I want it right now. So all we gotta do is hit this little green arrow and it will sit there and every 45 seconds it starts counting down. It'll rev it three times and then it'll reset the 45 second counter. Um, that way it's constantly revving it every 45 seconds so you don't have to worry about that uh, liquid pulling up in the intake or in the catalytic, catalytic converter. All right, it's time to add the cleaner. Unopened. You see it spraying in the cleaner right there. It should be uh, flipping the throttle here within a about another 10 seconds or so. It does that once every six seconds and then it resets the 45 second timer. So it's gonna it's gonna take a while. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. It I mean it takes like a half hour or so for it to uh, completely go through all that liquid. So while we're waiting for all that liquid to be sprayed into the intake, check out how this thing works. So there's a count of how long it's been running for 15 minutes. There's our timer where it's going down. And uh, so in another five seconds, it's gonna blip the throttle one more time. Pretty neat, reset the timer. Pretty cool. Check out all the smoke that's coming from the exhaust. Hopefully that's a good sign. Means it's uh, means it's doing something. Uh, it's finally starting to sputter out now. Barely anything coming out. There it goes. All out. Let's see how long it took for that full can to be injected. 26 minutes total. So now I went ahead and put the 44K in the gas tank. We're going to go do some full throttle pulls to try to uh, loosen up and uh, remove any carbon that, uh, that's remaining and come back and pull the intake off and see what it looks like. Well, there you go. We put 25 miles on it. Now time to pull the intake and look at those valves. Well, I got the intake off and I'm not very impressed. I was uh, <laughs> really disappointed to look down in there to see that it doesn't appear anything really changed. It's saturated, it's wet. You could tell the cleaner, you know, covered the deposits, but it didn't do that much. And maybe if you drive the car more, maybe more will come off with time. But uh, so far, it's not looking all that great. So it looks like walnut blasting is the best option for removing this carbon and this, this 
cleaner may be just a preventative maintenance, but I don't really see it removing any decent amount of deposits. You get the idea. So I went to BG's YouTube channel and they have a video where they're using the exact same product in an engine and then later on in the video they show this picture of before and after service. There's a massive difference in the before and after and of course after 300 miles it gets even better. Um, so maybe driving this car for more than 25 miles will will get it a little bit cleaner but I, I don't think it's uh, working near as good as what it did uh, for, for these guys uh, in this application. So here's some pictures of the valves before and after cleaning. You can tell there is a slight difference in the after pictures. I think number five probably has the biggest difference, but most of the heavy carbon looks untouched for the most part. As far as the intake manifold goes, it looks about the same. I don't really tell much difference. That runner there looks like it might have been a little bit cleaner. But for the most part, not a huge difference. Well, after seeing the results, it looks like the only good way to remove stuck-on carbon deposits is by using walnut blasting. The BG products probably works good as a preventative maintenance thing. Uh, if it would have been done every 30,000 miles like they recommend, uh, this car would have had that service done three times already, and it prob probably would not have near as much uh, carbon buildup as what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and order a walnut blaster, and I'm going to let the customer take the car. And I will continue this video when the car comes back. You can see right now, 100,276 miles. And the date is January 20th. And when the car comes back, we'll be able to see after several hundred miles, did the carbon end up falling off like in the BG picture after 300 miles it was uh, nearly perfectly clean? Or does it still look the same as what it does today? All right, guys, my new walnut blaster just showed up. Customer brought the vehicle back. It's now February 2nd. The car now has 490 more miles than the last time we took a look at the valves. So let's see what they look like now. I will say, they are cleaner. Now this one, it's not a huge difference in this cylinder. But you'll see it on the next couple cylinders. That one's still about the same. But this one, you can tell the intake runner is a little bit cleaner. However, this cylinder is probably the biggest difference one. So the runner is very clean, and that valve on the left is pretty clean. So that one, it did make a difference. So I'll put some, uh, some before and after pictures of what it looks like now after driving it for over 400 miles. So as you can see in the pictures, the number one cylinder didn't really change any from the last time. Uh, number three is about the same as well. However, number five, you can tell a decent amount of, of difference. And also number two, four, and six have a decent amount less carbon. Well, now it's time to use my new Autool Walnut Blaster and see how clean we can get these valves. For those of you who have never seen a Walnut Blaster used before, the operation is very simple. We have shop air going into the unit. That forces very fine walnut powder through this black hose and out the nozzle. It's got a little trigger. And the nozzle of the blasting gun sticks through the rear of the silicone adapter, which will give us a good seal when we push it into the cylinder head. Now, any walnut shell that is blasted at the valves will be sucked up through this hose, which connects back to the machine, which has an internal vacuum. And that's all there is to it. Now let's get to blasting.
Well, so far I've cleaned the rear three cylinders. I found out that this adapter, it works, but what works better is if you get yourself a fuel filler neck hose, which I had laying around here. And I got this adapter off of Amazon. It's only like 20 bucks, but it's just a, and I didn't think it was gonna work very good because there's nothing to seal it. It's made out of aluminum. Um, and there's there's no rubber or anything on the bottom, so I didn't think it's going to get a, a very good seal. Uh, comes with a hole right here, and that's where you'd uh, put your um, put your nozzle in. And uh, of course, I egg shaped that so I could get a little bit more articulation. But this thing works a, so I'm going to show you real quick. Um, and also, I took one of the nozzles. This machine came with two different nozzles, and I bent one about a 45 degree angle. And uh, that is what cleans about 90% of the of the intake runner and whatnot so you can get up in there and and blast the walls because with just a straight nozzle you can't really get it very clean so that uh, just put it in the vise heated it up nice cherry red and bend it over um, that's a great modification so here I'm going to show you just how well this aluminum adapter works check that out it just latched right on it's actually supporting all of its own weight and that's a lot of weight hanging off that thing Pretty impressive when you consider there's a half inch hole in the thing. Well, the walnut blasting is all done. Let's see what it looks like. As you can see, nothing compares to walnut blasting. Nice and clean. It took approximately 30 minutes per cylinder. Well guys, it's about time to wrap this one up. I hope you all learned something from this experiment. I know I did. I think we can all agree that the BG products do work. However, they are no match for the really stuck on carbon that's been on the valves for a very long time. And that the best solution is to clean the valves with the walnut cleaning machine. And after that's been performed, all one should have to do is periodically run some type of GDI air induction system cleaner through their engine every 15 to 30,000 miles to keep any carbon buildup um, from from becoming a problem.